Hi there, this is John Frenet, and welcome to an encore presentation of our Legacy Business Spotlight. These are best done in person, and with the current state of emergency restrictions, that's just not possible. So we will be re-releasing our past episodes every Saturday at noon until this pandemic is in our collective rearview mirror. Until then, enjoy this encore presentation of our Legacy Business Spotlight. <laughs> Some businesses succeed, some don't. Then there are those that seem to have been around forever. The true entrepreneurial success story. How did they do it? What was their vision? What makes a success? In this special episode for Eye on Annapolis, we speak with the true success stories. Those business owners that have been around for decades. Learn from their successes and failures. Now, here's host John Fernay. Well, I'll tell you, I am thrilled to be here in Davidsonville for a couple of reasons, because A, I love dogs. And when I pulled in, I heard all these dogs yapping at Dogwood Acres Pet Retreat. And also, I finally get to know Audrey's last name after hearing her commercials on WRNR for years and years and years. This is Audrey from Dogwood Acres. And we're here with one of the owners, Audrey Reichardt, who yes. is the owner, along with her husband, Kurt, who is Hello. sitting here in the background. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Jill, also the general manager yes. of Dogwood Acres. Yes. How are you guys today? We're good. How can you not be good? It's a gorgeous I, you know, day. I, I, I tell you. What we're doing is we're talking to businesses that have been around forever in uh, Anne Arundel County. And we'll use forever sort of liberally. But, I mean, for a long time. I mean, and you guys certainly fit that bill. You've been here. All for, of my adult life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where, where did it start? Well, um, Kurt, when Kurt and I graduated from college, we both had different, very different career paths from than this one now. Um, he was going to go into the world of architecture. He got a degree in architecture. And I was more in organization development, human resources, um, that sort of path. Um, and um, we both, over a beer one day, said, you know what? We're not really loving what we thought we would love. And we had a dog named Casey, and her portrait is the check-in desk in the lobby. We had a dog named Casey, and at the same time, we were traveling a lot, and there was no place that we really felt like met my crazy standards for her. And so I said, there's got to be other crazy people like us uh, that want more for their pets. And uh, we just went for it. We were uh, really before the whole craze of the growth of the pet care industry. Sure, it's huge. And yeah, and it wasn't back then. We've been here, what, 22, 23 right. years. And we were definitely in front of the whole daycare thing. So right. we were actually one of the absolute first people to offer daycare in Maryland. And um, we're at the forefront nationally. We would go to national meetings and people would really challenge us uh, with the concept of why are you putting d dogs together? And isn't that irresponsible behavior? And so we uh, took a, a leading role even um, nationally. Um, and now, of course, doggy daycare is widely accepted and, and enjoyed. Well, it's kind of cool that uh, you're like next door neighbors almost to Homestead Gardens, yes. which is one of the uh, nationally known yes. landscape places. Yes. Uh, so it's it's kind of neat that we've got two nationally known businesses yeah. sort of as, as, as neighbors. But so you kind of gave up this, this corporate life, which wasn't terribly well established. I mean, it's fairly recently out of college. And it yes. was just like, this just wasn't the thing for us, which is like 90% of right. every adult right. <laughs> to right. move on there right. and, and do that. Now, have you always been right here on Central Avenue in Davidsonville? Yes. So some good luck did fall on, befall us where uh, there was an existing kennel here built back in the mid-70s. It was mostly a privately owned but, but for their own pets. The woman that lived here passed away and her family had made a decision to sell it. And we got word of that before it was ever put on the market. So we were very lucky because uh, Anne Arundel County, uh, as we all know, is a crowd place and they're very particular about um, their zoning and so we were very lucky to be grandfathered in which is why we're able to be in such a convenient location uh, so you you couldn't have probably b bought this vacant land and built what you built no way no way and we had to go through a lot of hoops the initial purchase was easy because it was zoned properly but then we tripled our size within a couple of years of being open you're sitting in the expansion right now and it took us about three years to go through a lot of legal hoops to get through some of the zoning uh requirements uh to to get permission to do it so welcome to Anne Arundel County yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but we did it and we succeeded and um our good reputation did help us along the way for sure the judge actually was a client so that helped so so yeah that's that's where we are now and how many uh 
guests do you, do you do you have well <laughs> we average we call them guests by the okay. way uh, we do I figured I figured as much yes uh, they're dogs and cats I think a lot of people don't realize that we actually do do cats as well take care of cats we all actually will take care of any furry creature any mammal we very regularly take care of guinea pigs ferrets rabbits, rabbits. wow uh, yeah so so but really our bread and butter it's is dogs. dogs and cats so it's called not- that's why it's not called Catwood Acres. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, funny story about that, actually, Sean. <laughs> when we came up with the name for Dogwood Acres, I was thinking all about the dogwood tree. Totally didn't, honestly did not connect the dot that there's the word dog in there, which is unbelievable because <laughs> I'm embarrassed to admit that my husband has been making fun of me ever since. Did you know That's, that, Jill? Yes, yeah. I do that. <laughs> so it's named I after the that. flower, not the animal for which I, you know, love, but... Anyway, so, uh, yeah, here at Dogwood Acres for dogs and cats, we regularly have about 100 daycare guests a day. We average about 100. And for lodging, depending on the season, time of year, how much travel is going on, mm-hmm. we average between 150 and 180 guests overnight. That would be a, a separate audience, if you will, right? I mean, you've got the daycare, the daycare group, which are here. Every day. Nine to five or well, whatever, whatever the owner needs. Correct. And so, yes, it's a completely different audience. However, uh, the vast majority of our dogs that come here for daycare do also lodge oh, here oh, overnight sure. when they go on vacation. So, And a lot of our daycare clients do come out of our lodging as well. So they come and they see how much fun their dog is having here. And uh, so then they decide and they begin to trust us. And then they decide that the daycare option would be good for them as well. What customer goes for doggy daycare? What's what's the doggy daycare customer like? You would is be that, surprised. Um, is there one? There is. There is. A, yeah. Do you want to? You want to remind? It's, it's definitely um, all, for all different reasons. Um, but most of the time, it's the busy person that just can't give the proper exercise during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so they want them to come here and be with their friends, running, playing. They want to pick up. A, tired, happy dog at the end of the day. Um, That's the biggest part. But most of them just like the socialization of it. Um, They don't have time to go to the dog park. They don't have time to get out, you know, and get the pet out of the house. So that's what they do here. It's playtime all day long. So yeah, you'd think it's all, I mean, the vast majority are full-time workers, but you'd be surprised how many people come and just just to provide their dog a treat. Their home, they could easily take care of their dog, but it's a treat for their dog. Sure. Well, well, you had mentioned that you said that there was controversy about letting the dogs be together. Mm. And I know when I was growing up, I mean, it was it was the little walls of cages. Yes. And and that's pretty much where it was. When I pulled in, I mean, obviously they were going nuts out in the, in the play yard and everything else. And why wouldn't you want the dogs playing with each other? Well, it is our thing, first of all, and it is because it's an additional responsibility, but there's science behind it. We had to do a lot of work to get our staff trained to animal behavior and play styles and recognizing communication between the pets. So okay, so, so that's, a, that's, that's your staff recognizing aggression versus wrestling. And we don't, exactly, and we don't even go that far to ha- make them decide that. It's, it's an energy level in the yard that's not even allowed. So what you saw them running around crazy, that's okay, as long as they weren't running around crazy too close to each other and getting the, the group energized. So there's a, a certain energy level we don't even tolerate because once they reach that energy level, then things can tip over. How do you control that? How do, you, you got a pack of dogs going nuts, and they're, they're it, I, I imagine it's like a pot of spaghetti. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's boiling up. The bubbles are just right over the lid. Exactly. You're about to hear the sizzle. We don't let it get there. That's, we yeah. don't like that. We don't let it get there. Um, a, a lot of it has to do with temperament testing in the beginning and then just recognizing grouping dogs together of a similar play style. Then you won't have one dog that prefers the chase and hide game and one dog that prefers more space and, and trying to blend them together is where it can become unsafe so a lot of temperament testing a lot of understanding the play style that the particular pet likes the best and then our staff involvement we keep them busy instead of just standing back watching them play we get involved we direct their behavior we or redirect or or redirect their behavior you're you're throwing the ball you're running you're wrestling with a stick or something much like children you know if they're left to their own devices you will come back to crayon on the walls and you know things like that so we, we're giving them activities to do before they can get themselves into trouble well here's a question you, you brought you, you threw kids into this mix here i mean and, and it always used to amaze me when i would take my kids you could watch a teacher 
and the kids are just going absolutely berserk. They're screaming. They're running. The teacher all of a sudden like puts two fingers in the class and goes, Shh, children, please be quiet. And all the kids just like immediately stop. They look up. They, they sit down. They fold their hands. And I'm like, I need to like rent you for my house. <laughs> do, now, is that something that – I mean do you – are you guys like the dog whisperers that are able to, to – do that with the dogs as they get? I mean, do they listen to you differently than they would listen to an owner? Absolutely. And we have a lot of clients that don't, well, it's not that they don't believe us, but they, you know, it's just, it's hard to believe, but absolutely. I wish you could witness it when it's time for them to go, when it's time for the daycare dogs to go into nap time or even the lodging dogs that aren't here as much, they know, well, especially the daycare dogs, they know the routine and doesn't matter what's going on in the yard. The second they're called to go to nap time, they just come right to the gate. They know exactly where to go. The lodging dogs, they don't get the queues quite as fast, but they know exactly where to go to go back into their homes. It's amazing. They don't mind the structure, and they quickly adapt to it. Dogs absolutely love Love. the routine. Yeah. I'd I'd imagine the experience of a daycare being at Dogwood Acres is probably a very good training um, regimen for a dog that may not be the most well-behaved at home. And I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, you say, okay, well, we you know, make the call for a nap time and they, they run to the gate and they know and they know where to go to their for their naps. Uh, that's something that takes a lot of training. So, I mean, that's I think that's got to be probably something for a dog that is not untrainable, but somebody that's a little bit on the edges probably would help I, them out. Yeah, I wish I wish that training could go home. It doesn't quite work that way. Mm-hmm. So it, it is definitely specific to, the, to here. So that is part of the reason why people become quite addicted to our daycare service is because if they do have a difficult ho- dog at home that acts out when it is bored, they get stimulation and enrichment here that they can't possibly get at home. And those dogs need that. So Sometimes we're the only place that can provide the level of – we do all kinds of enri- enrichment. So if you, if you have a really smart dog like a Border Collie, we give them puzzle toys that they have to figure out. So we do mental games. We do physical games. So th- these are things that it would it, – it, it's a full-time job for someone at home to provide this level of enrichment. Sure. And that's why people come, become so addicted to the service. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay. So we've got, we've got boarding and we've got daycare, mm-hmm. um, which sounds like someplace that I want to come to tomorrow. I know. We <laughs> but, don't want you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Pick up my microphone and leave. I don't know. But what what else do you guys do here? And I know I know that I've seen a lot of you in the news where you work with like the the canines and what all is outside of the boarding and the um and so, the daycare. So pretty early on, we observed that well we we wanted to honor the the human animal bond because it it is very significant and it's become more and more significant um, in in recent years. And we recognize that, and, uh, and we recognize that we were in a unique position to be able to to create an opportunity out of this, where we had contact. We you know we have access to hundreds and thousands of owners who love their animals, and then also to connect it with organizations in the community that were looking for some pet therapy. So I, I was in, we were in a unique situation to be able to broker that deal. So we started um, Caring Canines, and we're sort of the middleman where we make we, we recruit people. We help get the, their dogs trained, help them get through their testing. Uh, we, we provide, you know, the, the uniforms, all the documentation that they need. And then on the other side, we go out into the community and find organizations. And now now it's different. Now they come and find us. Right. Uh, find organizations that could really benefit from our pet therapy teams. Uh, and it is, it is, it's been an amazing experience. It's very humbling. None of us have dogs that would no, ever no. pass. <laughs> so for us, it's, it's quite, it, 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 it we're moved to tears. Yeah, it does. And, it takes and a, a very special bond. I'll it does. You, it's a very special animals owner. are just so, so incredible. There was a, a girl that lived up in Severna Park. She was going to school out in Colorado and she had uh, what the animals can be trained to do. She had some sort of, it wasn't narcolepsy, but basically she would just be in classroom and she could just go down. She could walk across the street and go down in the middle of the street. It it wasn't any specific time. She could be on the edge of the Grand Canyon, Colorado, or on the top of a mountain and all of a sudden fall off. And there was a dog that they found that trained that somehow sensed this that would sit there and, you know, it was it was just nudging her. Actually, it's funny that you should bring that up because we know her well. Okay. Um, we heard her story and we uh, our clients immediately responded and we did a huge fundraiser uh, for her. And we're, we're Probably the, about seven, we eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We got, we got her the dog. the dog. We found the dog. And yeah. we helped find it. fantastic. And it was, we've, you know, very cool. 
talk about a rewarding experience. Well, well I, I, I know she contacted me through I on an Apple Snow on Apple Snow. That's and right. And, I think and, we, we, and we sat there and threw up a bunch of that. And, but it was just it was just phenomenal to sit there and see. I've got a friend of mine whose daughter has Lyme disease, a fairly yeah. severe case, and she has a service animal that does it that can and and the, it's just amazing to me. I mean, here's something: medical doctors with probably collectively hundreds of years of experience yeah. can't figure out what the hell's wrong with this girl. Yeah. And they say, well, you know, let's get a dog to yeah. figure it out and yeah. not, not figure it out, but I mean, to, to at least be able to live to with help. it. Yeah, assist. Yeah. yeah it's um, phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you guys also do lots of events. I know that mm-hmm. recently you've done the Dogtoberfest, which was at the Annapolis Maritime Museum. Mm-hmm. Didn't you guys do a trivia down at the um, we had a, we, Old Stein? Old Stein. We had a huge turnout. That was so much fun. Was so great. in the winter months, we really do try to find ways for people to still get out with their dogs and have a good time. Because again, we really just, want to honor the bond and and like to be out in our community and like to provide ways for our people in the community to enjoy their pets so we're always looking for ways to do it um we every do every event have... or any event is more fun with dogs yeah <laughs> sure sure my the late... puppy plunge you <laughs> got the whole exactly you know. my latest idea that i really want to do and it's an idea i stole from germany actually is pug races get ready <laughs> we are going to be doing pug races one day. And we want to do, um, you know, what are they called? Mudders? Yes. So uh, we'd mud, like to do... Mud racing with your with pet. Your, with your pet. Oh. Puddles. So there obstacles are... Obstacles. Yep, there's some silly ideas. Where would you ideas. do that? Here on the property? Yes. Or we have it? enough mud here to create <laughs> quiet... Yeah. So we... There's... We're always... There's... Endless things, you know. I just witnessed do. a friend of mine took his corgi puppy to uh, cor- down Chincoteague. They had a like a corgis on the beach thing or something yeah, like that. Which yes. was we have a corgi pool event. party here, which is, I mean, we just all die. It's the all these little thing. legs and these wiggle butts run. <laughs> yeah. Staff Fantastic. volunteers for that yes. event. Yes, <laughs> and those that are actually supposed to be working on it with all our guests get completely distracted by the thirty corgis running around, and it is pretty. It's a great sight. That's funny. That's <laughs> funny, Jill. I think you're probably the one of the better ones to talk about it, but. If I was a dog, and I've been accused of being that at certain times through my life, but that's uh, neither here nor there. What, what's the experience for a dog when they come into either daycare or, or daycare and boarding? Well, one of the things right off of the bat is the the experience can be whatever the owner would like it to be. So we don't say to you, here's our schedule, here's our routine, here's how your dog fits in. Um, it's the exact opposite. We, we say right off the bat, what... Do you, what does your dog like to do? What what kind of activities do they enjoy? What do they do at home? Uh, we will recreate that here. So the most fun part of our day is nature walks and cuddle times and all of these customized activities that your pet is used to doing at home. They get it here. That's cool. And that and that's on the daycare and the boarding side, or is that yes? Well, daycare their routine is set. Every day they know what to expect, which is one of the cool parts of daycare. They have they see their same friends all the time. They're a true pack out there. They know each other well. Owners often say when they turn the corner to the driveway, their dog is excited. Um, they know where they're going. They're ready to get out of the car. So that routine is really set. Um, when they're lodging with us, it, it's all about us trying to make them feel comfortable at first if they don't know us well yet, um, but reinforcing the same fun activities that they do at home. And then don't forget about Ultimate Daycare. Yes. Ultimate Daycare is something that uh, pets can get. Our dogs, if they want more than just running in the yard, meeting up with their friends they like audrey mentioned earlier border collies or special breeds that need a little bit more attention they want to focus on fetch or they want to do the brain games and puzzles nose work those sorts of things we can do that during the day as well oh that's pretty cool how do you work when a i mean board lodging part yeah, I, get, I, get, I, know, I get the word exactly. but when, when, when your lodging guests come in i mean they may come in infrequently i mean i unfortunately i'm not a dog owner at this point and my dog had to put him down back in june but it, it was infrequent that they would board i mean it might be once a year it may be twice a year you know maybe more frequently than that you know how does how does a dog acclimate i mean is a dog capable of oh hey i remember dogwood acres that was a cool place yeah. i don't mind here or is it there, there it's definitely not a one one size fits all dogs are unique just like humans are so some of them are a lot more social um than others it, with humans or with dogs but Everyone here finds something that they, and I mean everyone as in the dogs, find, <laughs> find something here um, that gets them excited. So 
pets that are a little bit more timid may need time to figure out our routine and learn that we are not a scary place. And they learn it pretty quickly um, by the level of excitement around them. So we just have to figure out which way we can connect with them best, whether that's quiet moments or that's throwing your Frisbee 900 times. Uh, (laughs) But we will connect with them in one way or the other. But I do propose that a dog that that comes once a year remembers. remembers. I absolutely propose that. I, I, they, the, there's enough cues for them to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. And it's an emotional response. It's either, oh, gosh, I'm scared to death, or, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to get in there. And uh, the owners talk about that with us all the time, that they're amazed at the how the dog all of a sudden gets all excited and the dog hasn't been here for six months. I imagine there's a lot of, you know, the sensories. I mean, you know, they, they've got heightened smells and everything mm-hmm. else. And they're like, ooh, hey, I remember this. I mean, you know, I know I, I smell Chanel number no. five, the perfume, I think of my grandmother. <laughs> Go figure. Exactly. You know, exactly. <laughs> so, um, it, it's the same type of a thing there. Now, what what's with the technology? Are you guys all tech out? I mean, can can I watch my dog and and all that kind of stuff? Yes, we have uh, webcams that are in our play yards, so you get to watch all of the fun. But um, most of the time, people can log on. Well, people can log on anytime to our website and watch the live webcams in the yard if you're just feeling down at work and you just want to see well, some puppies lot, running around that's a, lo- <laughs> a lot of our clients say There's that if they if they are at mm-hmm. their desk they constantly have the window open at the very bottom of their screen so they can they work and then they kind of glance at their dog and then they work and then they go back to laughing at their dog again so it's fun and we they even like we even had uh, she, uh, she's still here she's a spanish teacher and she would use the live webcam <laughs> during her <laughs> Spanish class oh. so that she could see her dog playing, but also she could use, you know, they would talk about it in Spanish. Right, that's, that's hysterical. So, yeah, so no, there, there's some addictions to the, the webcam. As far as uh, all the other technology is concerned, yeah, I mean, we really are re- very reliant on, on technology mm. as well inside the building. We use iPads uh, to keep up to date, up to the minute. Tracking and notes. Notes and, on how the dogs are right. doing. No, no, you guys are not bets. No. Um, and I'm, I'm presuming, I mean, you know, God forbid something happens to one of your guests that, that are here. Do you have, I've, I'm assuming you've got relationships with every single vet within the area, but I am with, say, Greater Annapolis. I mean, is that where you would, if there would be something that happened, do you take the animal there or do you have them come out or whatever, whatever it may be for that? Is that, or do you have an emergency vet that you deal with? We do. We have, uh, well, we, we know all of our local vets very well. Um, but we have one vet that we use, um, on call as needed. A lot of clients appreciate that service because we will also take your pet to get vaccinations. So it doesn't have to be just if something unexpected were to happen. It's also... So you're like that East Coast karate thing where you pick the kids up. That's exactly right. We do. Well, have you seen our pet limo? I I did see that out. I did did see that out. Yeah, it's out and about a lot. In the parking lot. (laughs) So, um, but we do. We we have um, local vets on call. If there are pets that have any ongoing medical issues and are under the immediate care of a certain doctor, we will communicate and talk with them as needed throughout the stay as well. So, and I'm, I'm assuming you administer medications if they need it throughout the day and, and whatnot. There. Mm-hmm. Now, what about the amenities here? I mean, I know I've seen I've seen the pictures of the pool. Um, what What other things? I mean, you've got the big play yard out here, and you've uh, places to snuggle at night and or during the day during nap time. What are the, What are the amenities here at Dogwood Acres? Well, you've just seen the tip of the iceberg in the front. So we have actually about nine acres that are fenced in here. So the biggest amenity that we have here is space for the dogs to just run, let them play. Um, so that's that's a big thing of what we do here. Mo- uh, very many pet hotels actually have to be all indoors, so it's very nice for us that we're able to get the dogs outside uh, where you know where they where they like to be. Other amenities include uh, well, the the whole building is completely air conditioned and heated, so it's just like a home, and it, the floors are even heated in the winter times, so that's right. more comfortable for them. With tons of natural skylights, tons of uh, airflow, uh, air exchanges to. Um, to keep the air very fresh. When we built this expansion and we're in, in building the new building, uh, we felt very strongly that we needed to construct it ourselves to meet the standards of the care that we wish to provide, that we wouldn't be able to retrofit a different type of facility. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the structure of the bil- building is just as big a part of the, ca- the level of care that we provide as the nature walk and the feeding and the cuddle times. 
You said a new building. What's what's that all about? Pretty exciting. So by mid-February, this is my first time admitting this out loud, but by mid-February, we plan to be open and taking care of dogs uh, at our and cats at our new facility on Ken Island. That's great. So if we leave today, we can probably get over the bridge all by right. then. Okay. <laughs> okay, funny man. Yes. But I will say, you know, I've got to spin this, that, you know, it, it, there is some peace of mind knowing that your dog is taken care of if you can't get back over. So if you get stuck in one of those long delays, at that's least, that's very legitimate. It is legitimate. At least you know, or just call us if you're running late, and you don't you don't have right. to worry about this. Well, that's a huge. The Eastern Shore has been growing. I mean, I've got four or five friends that have moved out to Graysonville from Severna Park or from Pasadena and whatnot. They're getting off of the Western Shore a little bit. So, I mean, that that makes perfect sense in the world. So, February is when you're looking to. February is when we will be open. Yes, and we're going to start taking reservations. I think in just a few weeks. So, people are already calling, go you know, asking to get in. So, well, what, we're almost what ready. was why, why did you want to move out there? Was it it was at the market. Uh, you're just looking for an extra 40 hours to work right. that you could <laughs> figure it out. Well, it, it, the truth is, is my husband and I have spent a considerable amount of time on the on the Eastern Shore. Our son has been going to school over there uh, since uh, he's now a junior in high school, and he's been going over there since third grade. So we have we did get it. We have had a chance to get to know the island and mo- and a lot of the Eastern Shore, and and found that we just really like it over there. And now that our kids are growing up and don't need need us as much. Yeah, I was looking for a new challenge. Okay. Um, also, we have an amazing staff here, and we were looking for an opportunity to provide growth for them as well. Uh, we're a small business, and, and we have some staff that's ready for the challenge of helping to run two facilities or, or now being turned loose to run one without our constant supervision. Now, now where, do, you, do you live on the Eastern Shore? Do you live over here, or do you live on the property here? Or? We, we used to live on the property okay. here. That was when we were younger, and we now we live about 15 minutes away. Okay. Uh, uh, we do have staff that lives here, and luckily for us, our, our manager that's going to be um, over there is now living on the eastern shore. So the, the leaders of both buildings are actually going to be on the proper shores. <laughs> okay. And, and this is maybe a stupid question, but I'm assuming that there's somebody's here 24-7 for your lodging guests? It's not a stupid question because it's not a requirement. Uh, we have enjoyed the peace of mind of... Uh, having someone here at David, the Davidsonville location. Unfortunately, the zoning would not allow us to do it at the Ken Island location, um, but that we're just going to camera the heck out of that thing, and it is security, obviously, monitored security. Sure. Well, I mean, it, technology certainly has made it a lot easier to be able to uh, you know, monitor for anything that goes wrong. Yes. Uh, it's. I know you see the neighbor app on the the phones for all yes. the doorbells that ring. Yes. Like, oh, there was a guy that came to my door. Well, he left a package. <laughs> He's not suspicious. No, leave, <laughs> yeah. leave, leave, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Is there any thought about moving beyond Ken Island? I mean, is this uh, at at this point, or is that? Let's let's get let's get let's get through this first. <laughs> it depends who you ask, and it depends how well we survive the transition. So this has been a, a big learning curve for us, and and. I'll tell you what, if we get on the other side and we're like, this was fun, we, there, we, I would not be opposed to hearing about another location. But if you ask my husband, he has. Yeah, it, it also goes back to, to my schooling where I have a master's degree in, in organization development. And I, I still have some tools in this tool belt that I don't want to get rusty. And I wanted to play in that playground some more and see if I could grow an organization and, and, and in a successful way. And that's part of, part of what this is all about. We're, we still have so much passion for this industry. Why not, why not push it a little harder? But I'm just proud to say that we've been here from the very beginning. So uh, our industry has changed a lot because of the money that's now in it. There are a lot of people that get into this industry for the money. Mm-hmm. Um, business models have come in. Um, and and I, that, I'm not saying they don't do a good job. It's just a different different way of, of doing business. We don't have it that much in Maryland, actually, uh, because it's so difficult to get something started around here. Well, it's, it's any, anything you do for the money, I, I find, t- tends not to be. I mean, you do something that you love. I mean, and you look at the impetus behind Dogwood Acres, it was you didn't know any place that would give the care that you wanted for your own dog mm-hmm. and plain and simple yeah so i mean what did you what did you what did you put first coming into this business was the care of your own dog mm-hmm. it wasn't just the bare minimum that we can give to joe smith up the road right uh to make sure his his animal is returned to him breathing yeah. we were doing <laughs> rois and and you know we, we we didn't really know how to do a business plan so it was the passion that started and then we learned everything after after that how many dogs do you have now we're sadly down to one. Uh, she is a lot of work. What she's, kind? She's a 100-pound greater Swiss mountain dog. Wow. Uh, she thinks she's very special. Mm-hmm. And she, she is. She, she, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't really want another sibling. So she's going to get to enjoy being a single child. Uh, Jill, Jill's family keeps growing. 
Well, I, I have two dogs, and um, both of them think they're very special. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they always think they're very special. But um, Well, and you also have some kids. And, and Well, and I have humans as well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, yes, I just had my second, my daughter, nine weeks ago now. Oh, so, congratulations. So my family is growing. Yeah. But, but the dogs stay, believe me, in the bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what kind of dogs? Uh, they're both mixes, actually. Okay. One is a, a smaller 30-pound pug mix, pug mm-hmm. terrier or something or other. And then um, my larger one, she's 50 pounds. She's, we're not quite sure. She um, resembles a kangaroo. She, she <laughs> thinks she's a kangaroo. Um, she can jump about seven feet, um, has no problem doing that whenever she feels like it yeah that's um you haven't done the dna test no no i don't i kangaroo is probably part of it (laughs) (laughs) no it's all australian things making a little bit of a (laughs) well and i tell her that she's lucky she has me because no one else would know how to care for her yeah (laughs) my daughter my daughter has a dog that's very similar to that and it's uh when when she when when winston gets out it's yeah, it's gone. gone. Yep. It's yeah. gone. And it's not that she wants to. It's not. Renly doesn't want to be gone. She's she, just out there and realizes, oh my gosh, I don't know how to get back home anymore. She's she has often <laughs> jumped our fence at home and come to the front door. So she <laughs> so, knows, she doesn't want to be out in the world. She likes her spoiled life. She just is very athletic and <laughs> likes to prove it. Well, I'll tell you, what's the most surprising thing that most people don't know about Dogwood Acres? You know, I I would say. Um, because there are so many um, pet places that are popping up and growing more and more, it, it kind of speaks to the reason why you get behind it. I would say that people don't know the way that we got started and why, and it is different than most of the most of the places that are popping up. That that to me is probably um, something. It's not, it doesn't have to do with our care, even though it's exceptional. It has to do with the reason behind the business, and I think that that's why this business has been. So successful. Yeah, I think, I think people think that we're big business at this point, right? Right. right. Um, but it's still just us, still right? Just it's coming still just, yeah. every day and holding the high standard. And, I have and been caring. here for all of my adult life, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> starting uh, many years ago. I've been here for sixteen years, and um, and I haven't left because of that. Because I still know who's running it and the reason why we're doing it at the end of the day it's great how, how many people are on your on your human team that run this run this joint that's also a shocking number i don't think people realize how many people it takes to do this um, uh, our management team is about is different levels of management but a five Five, well, six. Five, six. And then for and then our, our staff. Full staff, yeah. Is, between full-time and part-time is between 50 and 60 employees. You've got a better uh, staff, to, staff to guest ratio than some private schools around here. Well, that, <laughs> that, that's important. Touche. Correct. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, well, that's, that, that's fantastic because, I mean, it obviously shows that, that the animals are not. Uh, the, the level of attention is, is yeah. absolutely Ignored. there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you deal with somebody where the dog is absolutely freaked out, paranoid? I mean, I know my dog, you know, if I take him to the groomer, he was cool with that. You take him to the vet and it was like, oh, hell no. You know, the tremors come on and everything else. How do you, how do you deal with whether it be a pet owner or, or a guest yes. that, that is coming in here to – that has, has a misconception? Well, usually the pet owners are uh, harder to, to win over than the actual pets. But we, we actually love having dogs that um, don't trust us uh, in the beginning. It's a challenge. It, and again, it, it, it gives us the opportunity to, to, to find create, that connection. To and, find that connection. Mm-hmm. And, and professionals here, that's what we're all about. So we love the more difficult dogs. We love to try to work through it. We give them extra time. We take it as a personal challenge. Uh, we communicate with the owners and, and say, not doing so well today. This is the behaviors that we're experiencing. But it's such a great phone call when, you know, 24 hours later you can say, breakthrough. You know, um, so we, you know, to be perfectly honest, we... We will do whatever it takes to win over uh, a dog's heart. It's wonderful to see when the when there's a connection made between a certain staff member and and a certain dog. They been working really hard for that co- connection and they take it as a personal reward the staff does um that they really feel proud that they they've earned that that the, dog's the trust. trust and and been able to make them feel more comfortable i've also got to think for a dog owner um that it's got to be a great feeling when you have that i mean okay i'm bringing my dog in and for whatever reason he's terrified terrified up here and it may be you know if, if it's for daycare it may be for a week it may be for two weeks uh, it may be for a day it may never happen I, you know whatever but then all of a sudden as you said when you drive in the next morning and the dog is like oh my gosh, this is great. This is great. We're back. We're back. Let's go. And I think that's probably uh, the aha moment for most. 
Absolutely. We love hearing that. Yeah. That's the best part about it. And you can see jumping out of the car. The dog's like, let's go. And the let's dogs go. pull. They you know, pull towards the door. I know the where door. the door is. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh, our dogs will run in through the lobby and run right to the daycare yard. Um, they know the routine. They don't need any a human to help them along the way. They're like, I know my path. Out of the way. Unhook me. Boom. Time to play. I'm done. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> Um, where can we learn more? The website, dogwoodacres.com. .com. Yeah. And uh, is the... Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Look for all the different events. Look for all the different ways that you can support them. And if you've got a pup that needs, uh, or a cat, or any kind of thing with fur, mm -hmm, that's right. <laughs> that needs some daycare or bordering, mm -hmm. give them a, give them a, you know, right here next to Homestead yeah. Gardens. We're between uh, Brick Church Road and Reva Road, Reva Road. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people think that their dog wouldn't do well here because it's the dog isn't social or because they adapted from a, a shelter and they don't want their dog to revisit that idea uh, i say come by and visit and we'll we will change you, your mind you will, your mind we, yes. in, we invite you for tours that's that that was that yes. I, I just that just dawned on me yes. so yeah, yeah. And anytime anytime, anytime and anytime uh, and you can see where your pet where your pet will stay and, and you will not see a sad sad pet here that's right <laughs> yeah you'll be amazed i'm telling you you got to see it for yourself to believe it I'm kind of bummed because uh, I would say if I go like to the SPCA and talk with them, there's all sorts of great pups and animals that you could yeah. possibly adopt, but there's no chance I'm taking anything home here today, I don't uh, yeah, think. Yeah, no, no. All of our <laughs> pets right. are very, very, very well loved. They come from wonderful families. <laughs> Correct. And that's good because we would have a lot more pets Ex than yes. we currently do. Yeah we, yeah, we each have some of our favorite set of, yeah. We would be happy to take off the owner's Absolutely. hands. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. So, so, Mrs. Smith, if you should yeah. happen to die tonight, yes. Yes. can you put her? Worry not. Can you sign this piece of paper for me? Yes. Just put her right over yeah. here. Yeah, we'll, yeah. exactly. I'm not about that. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Well, Audrey Riker, thank you very much for your time. Jill, Pleasure. thank yes. you very much. Yes, thank um, you. Dogwoodacres.com. Check it out. If you're up in Davidsonville, which is a stone's throw from anywhere, pretty much in Anne Arundel County, check them out on Central Avenue. Thanks very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we forget anything? Do we want to hit on anything else? or No, but that's what I was doing at the end. I was sort of thinking, you know, what is our, our, our main audience that doesn't use us? And they just have this idea in their head that it's a sad, they can't bring their dog back here because, well, they can't bring their dog to this environment because it's a sad environment if it's like a shelter. Or, you know, and, it, and I just, I think we hit it. But that's the only thing. That's the, that's one of the blocks well, is the misconception. Say, we're, we're not a kennel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you we know, that's that the word. Yeah, that's, that's the, the bad only word. thing is that misconception that. How do you deal with somebody where the dog is absolutely freaked out, paranoid? I mean, I know my dog, you know, if I take him to the groomer, he was cool with that. You take him to the vet and it was like, oh, hell no. You know, the tremors come on and everything else. How do you, how do you deal with whether it be a pet owner or, or a guest yes. that, that is coming in here to, that has, has a misconception? Well, usually the pet owners are uh, harder to, to win over than the actual pets. But we, we actually love having dogs that um, don't trust us uh, in the beginning. It's a challenge. It, and again, it, it, it gives us the opportunity to, to, to find create, the connection to and, find that connection. Mm -hmm. and, and professionals here, that's what we're all about. So we love the more difficult dogs. We love to try to work through it. We give them extra time. We take it as a personal challenge. Uh, we communicate with the owners and, and say, not doing so well today. This is the behaviors that we're experiencing. But it's such a great phone call when, you know, 24 hours later you can say, breakthrough, you know. Um, so we you know, to be perfectly honest, we we will do whatever it takes to win over uh, a dog's heart. It's wonderful to see when the when there's a connection made between a certain staff member and and a certain dog. They been working really hard for that co connection and they take it as a personal reward the staff does um that they really feel proud that they they've earned that that the, dog's the trust. trust and and been able to make them feel more comfortable i've also got to think for a dog owner um that it's got to be a great feeling when you have that i mean okay i'm bringing my dog in and for whatever reason he's terrified terrified up here and it may be you know if, if it's for daycare it may be for a week it may be for two weeks uh, it may be for a day it may never happen I, you know whatever but then all of a sudden as you said when you drive in the next morning and the dog is like oh my gosh, this is great. This is great. We're back. We're back. Let's go. And I think that's probably uh, the aha moment for most. 
Absolutely. We love hearing that. Yeah. That's the best part about it. And you can see jumping out of the car. The dog's like, let's go. And the let's dogs go. pull. They you know, pull towards the door. I know the where door. the door is. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh, our dogs will run in through the lobby and run right to the daycare yard. Um, they know the routine. They don't need any a human to help them along the way. They're like, I know my path. Out of the way. Unhook me. Boom. Time to play. I'm done. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this special podcast for I Am Annapolis. Please be sure to visit IamAnnapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinions. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the I Am Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you your local news direct to your phone or tablet every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. <laughs>